Quinta de la Rosa was bought by my great-great-grandmother and given to my grandmother, Claire, as a christening present in 1906. In 1988, my father, Tim, and myself, we started making our own port under our own label. I sent a lot of little small samples of port to whoever I could find who was buying wines and ports in those days. The first letter I got back was from Edwin Booth, who ordered 30 cases of 12 of our vintage 1988 port. It's a very, very long time ago that Sophia sent in a sample of her, I think it was vintage port if I'm right in saying it, I think it might have been 1988. I hope I'm right. It was 1988. It came in a jiffy bag with a letter completely out of the blue. I thought, right, first opportunity, we'll put this on the tasting table, position the spittoon, and had a look at this port. And I said, I found an absolute cracker here. Never heard of them. I think he was the only person who replied to all these samples. I thought we'd be inundated with uh, people wanting to buy our port. I was very naive. I was very infused. I was caught by the spirit and the style of the communication that I had. I guess that Edwin Booth understood of families and tradition and heritage, and he must have liked the story, and also he must have liked what he tasted in that little bottle that we produced. I can remember when I tasted the port, thinking, I've just got to have this. It is so damn good. So I can remember writing back straight away. I wrote and said, look, I'm absolutely thrilled with the port you sent. Can you reserve 30 boxes for me? Because my greatest fear is that they wouldn't have enough for me. I had no idea how much they produced. As it happened, yes, they were able to satisfy that order. We love people that give it a go. Booths is a little bit unusual in that respect, that they are entrepreneurial, they like the pioneering spirit. Why do I love port winemaking? Well, it's just part, it's in my bones, it's, it's my heart, it's what I've grown up with. My earliest memories was coming to the Quinta de la Rosa to visit my grandmother and not being allowed to tread the port because I was a woman. So always wanting to be able to be involved, to get into those lagars and tread it. Fundamentally, what makes a good port is the quality of the grapes that go into it. And we're very lucky where we are here. We're in the A-graded port region. So that means to say that we've got the best quality grapes that go in. That comes from our vineyard, which is beautifully and perfectly located right on the River Douro. And also we get the morning sunlight. So it means that we get the freshness Afternoon sun brings heat and power. Our ports are relatively light in style. They're still sweet, but they have an incredible balance, equilibrium, and dare I say it, elegance, and maybe that's because there are females behind the making of port, not just men. We make a port that's marginally drier than many other ports on the market. That's because we stop the fermentation by adding brandy a little bit later. Many ports are very sweet and almost rather sickly. You can have one glass, but definitely not a second. For the Quinta de la Rosa ports, uh, you can easily have two glasses. So we make three different types of ports for booths. The most important and the oldest in the sense that we've been making it for booths for a very long time is our finest reserve. Port is very like champagne. You actually have blends of years. Our finest reserve is about between seven and eight years in terms of its average age. It's very dark colored ruby flavor. So you get kind of blackberries and blueberry coming through. This is a port which I've often described to people as being like a really, really rich, delicious wine. You can actually drink this as opposed to sip it. Um, you heard it from me. I mean, I've got experience of this. Um, it's, it's quite delicious. The LBV, which is a much softer, rounder port that varies from year to year. I find a few cocoa coffee flavors. And the late bottle vintage is really aping the vintage style, if you will, by putting the ruby port into wood for that little bit longer just to accelerate the aging process, if you will, before it goes into the bottle, whereas vintage port is actually aged primarily in the bottle and needs some 15 to 20 years to reach its best very often. And finally is the 20-year-old tawny. And the 20-year-old tawny is a very, very special blend of at least 20 years old. That is a port that can be drunk all year round. In the summer, I love drinking it slightly chilled. This is wood-aged over an extended period of time and actually looks lovely. I always think, Tawny port looks very, very autumnal. Tawny in the autumn time and over Christmas, absolutely wonderful. 
speaking to La Rosa ports are almost like wine lovers ports, that's what people tell me. They are a little bit drier and they've also got this incredible minerality and freshness. The only way really for anyone to fully understand how delicious they are is by actually opening a bottle and trying one. The very interesting thing about both wine making and port making, and I often use the word wine making and I'm including port, is that it's a balance between the creative and the sounds. If you can have someone who understands both, then you end up with a very good winemaker. We're particularly proud of this port, largely because it's made by people who are artisans, by people who really care about what they produce. However nice Edwin Booth is going to be to La Rosa, if Booth's customers weren't buying our port, then we wouldn't still be here 30 years later talking about it. This isn't just a store playing the own brand game. Each product we look at and put under our brand is worthy of the quality, if you will, of our retail offer. The fact that Booth's is happy to put their name behind Quinta de la Rosa, it gives confidence to the Booth's customers that Booth's also like the product and appreciate the quality. We would certainly like producers of all products to aspire, if you will, to supply us with their product. That enables us to develop long and meaningful relationships which I hope are sustainable well into the future.